Justin Trudeau has been Prime Minister for eight years, and food price inflation is at a four-decade high. Uh, we have one in five Canadians skipping meals today because they can't afford food. 1.5 million Canadians going to food bank every single month. The, the Mississauga Food Bank is having people come in asking for help with medical assistance in dying, not because they're sick, but because they're miserable and hungry. Uh, after eight years of Trudeau, people cannot afford to eat anymore. This is not how it should be. We have the sixth biggest supply of farmland per capita anywhere on earth. We should be able to feed ourselves affordably, even cheaply, because we have so much farmland. So what's driving up the food prices? Well, carbon tax applies to farmers and who make the food and truckers who ship the food. And they pass that on to the customer. The carbon tax is a tax on food. The NDP and Liberals want to triple, triple, triple the carbon tax. Conservatives will get rid of the carbon tax. Secondly, the anti-fertilizer uh, rules that Trudeau wants to impose, they're going to make it harder for farmers to produce food. Less fertilizer means less output per acre of land. And that will mean more expensive and more foreign food on our, on our table. And finally, we have to get rid of the inflationary deficits. Whenever governments run big deficits, it causes the price of everything to go up because government is bidding on the same goods and services and credit as everyone else. So the cost of government is driving up the cost of living. We're going to bring home lower prices by capping government spending, getting rid of the inflationary deficits and carbon taxes that are making food, fuel, and housing so expensive. Why is it that Vancouver is the third worst housing bubble in the world when you compare incomes to house prices? We have more land than anyone else. We have the most land per capita in the G7, and yet the fewest houses per capita in the G7. Why? Government gatekeepers. You can't, in, in Vancouver, the cost of getting government permits and approvals to build a house works out to about $600,000 for each unit of housing. So you look at that condo or townhouse or standalone home, and you look at the price, know that $600,000 of the price you're paying is just for the government paperwork costs. This is a massive cost. I call them the gatekeepers, those who stand in the way of construction. How do we fix it? A poly of government will bring in financial penalties for cities that block building and financial bonuses for cities that allow more building. I want to incentivize cities to build more homes. I will require every single federally funded transit station have high density housing approved around it. In Hong Kong, they actually allow housing over top of the transit stations so that people can live all around the station. They, the youth and seniors don't even need to own a car. Third, we have these 37,000 federal buildings, big, ugly, empty buildings. People are working from home, and these buildings are empty. I'm going to sell them off and turn them into housing. We'll take the proceeds of the sale and use it to pay down our debt and deficit, and that will create more housing. Finally, we need faster immigration for those immigrants that have building trades skills. Bring them here quickly, get them to write the red seal, then they're certified to practice as uh, carpenters, uh, um, framers, plumbers, electricians, anywhere in Canada to build the millions of houses that we need to have. We're going to bring homes that people can afford by getting the gatekeepers out of the way and building and building and building. More doctors and nurses and fewer gatekeepers. This is the problem with our healthcare system. We artificially restrict the supply of doctors and nurses in Canada. So no matter how much we spend, we, have, we can't get any more doctors and nurses. And this is how it works right now. The governments limit the number of medical school placements and residency positions so that we can't get our young people who want to be doctors into the system. And our medical licensing bodies block immigrant doctors and nurses from working in the system. Gatekeepers, 
keeping our young people and our immigrants out of the medical professions. Only 41% of foreign trained doctors and 37% of foreign trained nurses are allowed to work in medicine, according to Statistics Canada. I can send you this. Matt, can you make sure they get that data? It's incredible. The majority of immigrant doctors and nurses are not even allowed to work in our hospitals. It boils my blood when I go to an emergency room and I'm with my daughter who's screaming in pain from a migraine headache and we're waiting for five or six hours because of a doctor shortage when there are thousands of immigrant doctors that could be doing the work. So here's my plan. A, oh, but by the way, there's, it's worse than that. It's even Canadian-born kids. So I met a young lady from Montreal. She went to Ireland to get her medical training. And then I said to, I said to her, well, good news is when you're done that, you'll be able to come back and practice in Quebec you're, you're, to do your residency. She says, no, 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 no. They won't allow me because I've trained in Ireland. So I have to go to California to be a resident. <coughs> a resident. So I said, well, after you're done in California, you've got your residency done, obviously you'll come back to Quebec. No, nope, they won't accept someone who was a resident in California to be a doctor in Quebec. So she's a Montrealer who will be tr a, a, of a standard that's good enough for Ireland, good enough for California, but not good enough for Quebec. So here we have a young Canadian who paid her entire post-secondary education without any help from the government, who could be working in a Quebec hospital, but is now going to be working in California. And this story happens again and again and again and again. It doesn't matter how much money we throw at the system. As long as we're banning people from working in the hospitals, it's never going to get better. So here's the deal. I'm going to sign deals with provinces that require that every foreign trained doctor or nurse should get a yes or no answer within 60 days based on their tested ability, not based on where they went to school. We should have a common testing standard for medical professionals, indeed all professionals, so that people are judged by their abilities, not based on where they're coming from. Right now, the system spends years evaluating. You know, they went to university in Beirut, so we have to go and examine how does that university work and how much time did they spend in the classroom there and how, much, how would that have compared to what they would do at University of British Columbia. It's impossible to, to, to match them up. What we need to do is have a common testing standard and allow doctors and nurses to be evaluated based on meeting that same Canadian standard. It should be fast and seamless. And a poly of government will sign deals with the provinces requiring that they imply that fast 60-day standard so we can get more doctors and nurses. And I'm going to back up 30,000 small study loans so that immigrant doctors and nurses who, who need to leave their job to take some time and study up to the Canadian standard can do it. Finally, we need to make it possible for future immigrants to study and prepare to get their license before they even arrive so that they can do it if they're in Mumbai, they can be at their, at their home in Mumbai while they're waiting to immigrant, immigrate to Canada, working through the steps so that when they get to Canada, they immediately have their license and they can get to work. That's the plan. Remove the gatekeepers to have more doctors and nurses. Well, listen, the, the overall post-secondary education system is provincial in nature, but I would encourage the provinces to shift resor educational resources towards practical, uh, uh, practical skills and knowledge that is in high demand in our market economy. Uh, too much of the money is going to education that doesn't result in a job, and not enough is going to practical education. So I, th uh, and I would constantly tell the provinces, get your money where the jobs are. Secondly, we need to make this a rewarding place for our young people to work. Why do they want to leave? They pay lower taxes everywhere else. So we train all these brilliant young engineers in Waterloo, and then what do they do? They get a job offer in Austin, Texas, or in Silicon Valley, or Singapore, Australia, New Zealand, Switzerland, Ireland. They pay much lower taxes, so they take their big, powerful brains and they go somewhere else where they can get a reward for their hard work. We're, it doesn't pay to work anymore in Canada. We, are, we have become a country that punishes hard work. It's the war on work. You earn a buck, you lose 50, 60 cents to the government. The Polyev government is going to cut taxes so people bring home more of each dollar they earn, and we bring, bring home our brightest young people 
to create wealth and opportunity in this country rather than abroad. Whenever Canada keeps a, foreign, a, a, a student visitor here permanently, we strike the jackpot because you've got someone who has an education. They're usually in their early 20s, so they have 40 years of work, ahead of, of work life ahead of them. Their most productive years would be in Canada if they stay. So I would encourage those student visitors to stay in the country, and I would make the system... Uh, easy and fast for them to do so. I think sending someone back to their home country who would like to stay here after they've achieved a, uh, a degree or a, a skill certificate and after they've followed the law and worked hard in our country is absolutely insane. They, have the taxes as well. they pay taxes, they follow the law, they've got an education, and they've got 40 years that they could contribute to our economy before they re retire. That's part of the solution to our demographic problem. We have too many people retiring and not enough people working. We need younger immigrants to stay in this country. So I would strongly encourage, I would change the system to make it easier and faster for students to stay in this country.